Welcome to the Thriving Tides Podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur or busy individual looking for self-care ideas, you're in the right place. And we can't wait to share our experiences with you. Do you ever feel that sinking feeling that you just don't really matter or that you're a fraud or that you can't do the thing because someone else will do it better? (laughs) This was what you may call the imposter syndrome. Mm. It is something that is actually more common than people actually think. And I think the word syndrome does a disservice to it Mm. because I think it's something that is generally in most people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we all, whether it's our personal lives, our entrepreneur lives, our business minds, our career minds, we all at one point face the dreaded imposter syndrome. Mm. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Episode over. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Mic drop. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. As you started talking, I like was just absorbing it as if you were asking me all these things. And I like felt my heart starting to race (laughs) and just being like, wow, like, yes, yes, all of it. Yeah. And I'm saying that with a lot of enthusiasm, even though I don't get excited about the fact that I, along with mostly everybody else that I know has imposter syndrome at least at some point um but really quite often I think yeah uh people are still learning what imposter syndrome is so I think as they learn what it is they recognize oh I've been feeling that way for a long time I just didn't know it actually had a label yeah yeah I was gonna say growing up I didn't realize that that was a thing You know, I just thought, oh, wow, I need to compare myself to this person because Mm. they're so much better than me. But, yeah, we'll we'll go into that. (laughs) We already have. We're already starting right off the gate here. Um, But, yeah, I think you wrote down these notes and I think it's like a really great definition. But imposter syndrome is the feeling that your achievements don't matter, that Mm. you only scraped by because of luck or by fooling others and onto believing in you. You feel deep insecurity about your work and accomplishments, always anxious, and you'll be exposed as a fraud. Mm. Oh, that word fraud. Mm. (laughs) It's not a good one. Yeah. But it's it's real and you can feel it, right? Um, I feel this often. Yeah. Yeah. And I always kind of wonder that, like, do I feel imposter syndrome because I have anxiety? Like I, I almost kind of wonder if my imposter syndrome is heightened because I have anxiety and mm. depression. You know, I, I wonder if perhaps I could not be so anxious that it would be. But then I also talk with people that don't have anxiety and they're like, oh, no, I, I have that exact same thing. So it's kind of defining mm. when when am I being anxious or when am I being And I'm suffering through imposter syndrome. Yeah, feeling like an imposter. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a great question. I'm no mental health expert. (laughs) Well, we have imposter syndrome just talking about imposter syndrome. Right? I'm like, oh, I can't can't (laughs) possibly answer this. this. (laughs) Uh, But in my opinion, which is, (laughs) and I'll say it too, (laughs) not a, you know, one with education behind it, but just my real life experience is... There's probably times where your anxiety and depression heightens this, yeah. I would say, right? As it does other things in your life too, right? Like other feelings and, and things that you have would be heightened or diminished because of your anxiety or your depression. So True. this likely goes hand in hand with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not fun either. <laughs> exactly. And before we even get started on it I actually found this graphic which I thought was kind of nice because Mm. there's a lot of people that think that they don't have imposter syndrome and then until they look at this graphic I'm like oh yeah maybe I have had tendencies to fall under Mm. the imposter syndrome umbrella yeah so this graphic it has things like I'm just lucky or they're on to me or I'm a fraud others are better I'll get found out. Mm. It's not perfect. They'll know I'm a fake. I'm never good enough. 
I don't deserve it. Yeah. So if you've ever thought any of those things, congratulations, you've suffered imposter syndrome. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> congratulations, I really know. But yeah, you, you know can I mean? collect your certificate on yeah. your way out. <laughs> <laughs> you may proceed to listen to this whole episode. <laughs> right. And oh, and I love this graphic too, like the visualization of it. Like maybe in our YouTube, we'll with, to share you can it. pop it up. Yeah. Um, but it's like all these eyes looking, looking in, right? Yeah. And then there's these thought clouds that are saying all these things. And it's just that feels like it, too, because you think people are always looking at you. And that's a big part of the imposter syndrome that comes up. It's, yeah. you know, these thoughts that you're internalizing, you're magnifying them and yeah. thinking that everybody else is thinking the same thing that you are about mm-hmm. yourself. It's so true. It's wild. Wild. What are some other characteristics you think that might define under imposter syndrome um like doubting yourself constantly yeah. so yeah. like that feeling of wanting to hold yourself back or saying you know, no just... to things that you actually are kind of jazzed about but yeah, yeah but you're worried about like making a fool of yourself or not I'm doing not it like perfectly enough. or oh someone else yeah. can probably do it better so I'm just gonna pass right like yeah. that's a big one um attributing your success to external factors mm. so being like oh I'd never be here without the support of whoever or oh I just got lucky in the right place at the right time mm. and and so and so picked me out of the crowd you know like Instead of being like, yeah, I busted my ass for this and I'm smart and I did the work, you always are saying like, no, no, there's there's something outside of me that got me to where I am today. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, berating your performance. Okay. So I think I do that. I know I do that. Uh, but if people are like, oh, my goodness, you did such a great job or whatever, it can be, be like, oh, you know, it wasn't it was nothing or it wasn't that good or I, I messed up a bunch of times, you know, like you can just get all up in your head and think that you didn't do a great job. And like sometimes you just need to listen to others and say thank you. Right. That kind of <laughs> goes back to the sorry episode, too. Mm, right. How yes. you, you know diminish your accomplishments and apologize for your accomplishments yeah those kind of go hand in hand then absolutely interesting yeah it all circles good connection right (laughs) um then there's the inability to assess your skills realistically oh okay um and i think that kind of goes with a little bit with braiding your performance too right where it's you think your skill level is like down here when really it's like several notches above but you're not able to see that gap or like or you're not able to like close that gap and see like where you're actually at yeah I could kind of see that Mm. I think yeah yeah like if you're performing at like an intermediate level but you think you're always at a beginner something like you know and you're like only giving yourself opportunities that stay at that beginner level that's so true although I will say like sometimes you don't realize that you are at a higher skill Mm -hmm. until you start doing it like I know when I started um especially when I was a uh, a coach at Startup Zone I would instruct social media by I thought oh I'm not there yet I'm such an imposter being this way but then I would go on and on about Instagram strategies and so on and sure enough I took a course and I I, when I took the course I knew everything I mean this is exactly what I'm teaching everybody why was I diminishing I knew what I was doing what and like did I have to go through that whole entire process to figure it out like yes I sometimes (laughs) like I, I wonder if I would have just pursued it with confidence mm-hmm. and just knew, you know. Yeah, yeah. like push, pack, push past that imposter syndrome yeah. and just know, like, I, I earned this. Exactly. I am here because I deserve it and I have the skills to be sitting in this seat. Yeah. But so many of us don't feel that way on a regular basis. That's true. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's so that it comes to like this other characteristic I wanted to talk about too is the fear of not living up to expectations. Mm, fear. <laughs> 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 um, and that could be expectations on that you put on yourself. It could be expectations that others have of you. Um, I think both of them show up a lot for all of us, right? So mm. if you're always feeling like, oh, I'm never gonna live up to them, then that's that imposter syndrome too. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. This is already a lot. 
It's <laughs> feeling heavy. Yeah. Shake it up. Shake it up. <laughs> you don't want it to be like a super, super heavy episode, but mm. what we are talking about is really heavy because it's talking about us self-criticizing mm. ourselves. Yeah. And yeah, I I don't even know where to start with imposter syndrome. <laughs> like, I know, like I said, I definitely, without a doubt... <laughs> have imposter syndrome um like a complete confession i've actually once held back not bidding for an rfp so a request for proposal um they came to me asking for their proposal and i still held back because i didn't want to put a bid and get turned away because Mm. i have gotten it before and that's just part of the job but i was so scared of putting myself out there because i was like oh well there's other people that are better than me how do I know? You know, mm-hmm. I could have been the perfect fit, yeah. yep. you know, and there's been times where I did win the proposal and it was an awesome job. And then you think, OK, well, then did I just, you know, shoot myself in the foot? Did I, you know, miss an opportunity? And so often we hold ourselves back, cancel the things and make decisions out of fear. Mm-hmm. And what what greatness could happen when you ignore that imposter syndrome, take the leap of faith mm. and do it. You How know? freeing that would be. Oh, well, like, <laughs> even when I started my business, I actually mm. tried to start a freelance graphic design business before Summer Street Creative. Mm. And I had everything set up. I had a logo. But then as soon as I started promoting myself, I started like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not mm. an expert yet. I can't. I can't be my own boss. Like, no. And I stopped and I applied for a job and I got a job. And I look back at that and I almost kind of wonder, like, where would I be? Like, it was, it's OK because I think everything does happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. But I always go back to, like, what if I had initially was freelance so much earlier? How, what that would have done for my career? How different my career would be? Right. You know, but and here I am now realizing that, hey, I can do the thing. Why did I always discredit mm-hmm. myself? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yet the imposter syndrome is still showing up. Right. <laughs> but you're still doing the stuff. So yeah. that's good, right? Yes, there's key places where you are still holding yourself back, but um it's crazy. I think I think comparison is one of the biggest factors that plays mm. with imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. So we're looking at especially in the world that we're in, yeah. social media, everything's right in our face and we're like, "Wow, look at that person doing this, look at that person doing that." And even if you feel excited for them and feel inspired by them, it that can still lead to imposter syndrome. Like it doesn't mean that you're never happy for other people or anything like that. It's that you internalize like I could never do it. Oh, totally. Well, we go back to the highlight reel. Mm. You are probably excited and happy for them, but then you just see another and then another and then it snowballs and then you get into like and it's smaller. smaller. And smaller. Exactly. <laughs> then even if it's subconsciously you have a really good day, but the next day it's bad, then you remember that highlight reel. Mm. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Right? Yeah, because you we don't we we see everyone's accomplishments, mm. but we don't see what they're effort or their own imposter-esque feelings that they're getting like we only see their highlights yeah and because we're not seeing their struggle with like imposter syndrome and all that stuff of course like we're gonna be like oh well it seems like it was really easy for them if Mm -hmm. it's really hard for me that means I must be doing it wrong that must be I don't deserve this this means I'm I'm not not the expert oh yeah 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 (laughs) and it's it's us comparing someone else's outside to our inside yes and they don't compare yeah right i mean i could get into a whole episode about how you shouldn't compare outside to outside inside to inside whatever (laughs) but it's even more so a big stretch when i'm looking at the highlight reel or what someone's putting out there and their accomplishments and i don't have any idea what's playing in their mind Mm. because they probably are having all these feelings too yeah They just found a way to keep showing up. True. And often, you know, some people let it get in their way and not move forward. So. Yeah. Comparison. It's the death of joy. (laughs) Death of joy. Thief of joy. Doesn't matter. What about when people compare themselves to you? To me? Yeah. Specifically? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, it's awkward. Because, <laughs> like, I know you've mentioned that people have told you that they're inspired. Mm. And I think I've even told you that I'm inspired by, like, your go-getter attitude mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I get weird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I get weird. It's... um. I think that kind of comes back to maybe like that berating your performance that I was talking about with the characteristics where Mm. I'm like, oh, no, you know, like it's no big deal or you're awesome, too. I try to like turn it around on them or um, yeah, like I don't I I struggle with this because I don't want to be the reason that other people have imposter syndrome. Yeah. And I don't say that in a look at me, I'm an amazing person type way. But I do recognize that most of what I do share is the good stuff and that I'm not super comfortable getting online and saying when I'm having a really rough day or if I can't get out of bed or, you know, I'm really beating myself up. Mm -hmm. But I do have those days and I'm trying to find that strength to share them more often so that people can recognize that. And that is what I would want to be the inspiration for of being able to like show all sides of me. And not just be that person who's like, you got your workout in and you got your work day done and you're doing these courses. And like, yes, I am doing all those things. But in sitting there, I'm just like, holy shit. Like, (laughs) (laughs) can I do all this? Am I capable? Am I enough? Like, um, part of me, I'm just going to spar. I'm just going to have the Julianne show for a moment here. Do it. Um, Uh, like sometimes too, like when I think about taking all these courses and continually learning, it's like, that's part of me combating my imposter syndrome too, Mm. because I'm always feeling like I have to level up, take that next course, have that certification, prove that I'm worthy and that I'm capable of doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. So that could play a factor there too. Yeah. Um, and I remember last February, so almost a year ago, which is crazy, um, when I was down in Washington getting a certification for the leadership circle profile, um, I cried in the check-in on day two in this group of people saying like, I don't feel like I deserve to sit around this circle with all of you because you all are so accomplished and doing amazing things. And I got really emotional sharing that. And I was like, holy crap. Like, and I, it, was fine in the end like not to just like rush my way through this but um that was like I was just like ding 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 like on the first day everyone was introducing like who they were what they did all this stuff and I'm sitting there being like oh like I was not even a year into running my business and being an entrepreneur and I was feeling a lot of that I was making zero money and yet spend all this money (laughs) to go to Washington and get this training in the hopes that it would pay off. And it it has been. Um, But I just felt like a fraud sitting there because I didn't have this experience of all these other people. And I just thought, like, who am I to think that I deserve to be here? Yeah. Yeah. It Like crazy. And like it was I had some really great conversations with a lot of them one on one in the following like that day and and the next day which was beautiful because I opened up and said that yeah and many of them came and told me they feel the same which I just couldn't even believe I never would have thought that any of them would have thoughts like that well and they say like step one in imposter syndrome is to talk about it because it's so true that because we all feel this way almost knowing is the solution to kind of combating it a little bit Mm. you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and another thing that kind of while you were talking about that you were also comparing your beginning of your journey to Mm -hmm. their middle and or half end you know what I mean yeah like absolutely you can't compare that because it's you know like if you write a book you can't compare your book to someone else's book that Mm -hmm. is completely finished yeah because you haven't finished writing it exactly and I I can't remember where I heard that I know it did not come from me (laughs) but it's yeah yeah, and when you said that I'm like wow and but like Mm. it's so true when people in the moment it's so easy to get distracted by your your thoughts and even if they aren't thoughts that you're actually feeling it's that comparison and Mm. 
Yeah, especially it's in something tough. as that you something that you want really badly to. Mm-hmm. Because we're trying to protect ourselves, we think that, like in a subconscious level, we're trying to protect ourselves. That you know you want this, but your imposter syndrome is coming in. Like, no, mm-hmm. you aren't ready for this. No, yeah. let's let's protect ourselves a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's just you know downplay it yeah. or or pretend it's not that big of a deal, and you know just kind of sit on the sidelines or, or take a seat on the bench and just let the others kind of pave the way right and you'll get up and play when you're ready um yeah that was a huge huge one for me that was that was rough wow Mm -hmm. and then yeah so then when people say oh I'm so inspired like I, I you know follow you on Instagram or whatever and look at you you're doing all the things like I just I automatically just want to be like I'm not perfect like that's my auto response right like yeah oh goodness like don't don't look up to me (laughs) (laughs) um but then there's this weird like sense of wanting to show people the good because I'm a coach and I want them to see like if you use the tools and the practices that I have like you can have a great life and you can be happy but nobody's happy all the time yeah (laughs) <laughs> That's like not even something that you should be striving for because exactly. you're supposed to feel all the different emotions and go through all the things. But yeah, it's just like I feel like an imposter if I show up having a bad day because I'm like, oh, this I'm, I'm not supposed to do this. Yeah, you're supposed to coach people out of that. <laughs> yeah, right? So like who am I to have a bad day when I'm yeah. a coach? Which is just like so not you're a human being still so like you can't. First and foremost, I gotta remind myself that. <laughs> well, something that was interesting as I was researching this was that sometimes, like, we look, think of like celebrities, mm. you know, like they have the money, they have the fame, they have everything that we would pro- possibly want to obtain. But as I was doing my research, there's actually a lot of famous, well known people with accomplishments and like trophies and all the accolades in the world, and they still have imposter syndrome. So some of them, such as Michelle Obama, Mm. Tina Fey, Mike Myers, Natalie Portman, Michelle Pfeiffer, Meryl Friggin' Streep. (laughs) (laughs) Meryl Friggin' Streep. (laughs) Daniel Radcliffe, and the list literally went on. And I found this one quote that, like, I'm probably going to print somewhere because... Oh, it's... Okay. So... (laughs) It's actually from Maya a- Maya Friggin Angelou, like Maya. Right. Yeah, <laughs> everyone looks up to her. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say like everyone knows who she is, uh, but she actually said every time I write a book, every time I face that yellow pad, the challenge is so great. Mm. I have written eleven books, but each time I think, uh oh, they're going to find me out now. I've run a game on everybody, and they're going to find me out. And wow. she's Maya friggin' Angelou. Yeah. Like, it just goes to show that you can, <laughs> there's can be, there can be so many people that look up to you and you can accomplish so much and you can be a figure and you're still going to compare yourself. And so it's another reason why I kind of, I'm glad we're talking about it too, because if one listener can listen and be like, okay what I'm feeling about myself that's totally cool normal (laughs) and talk about it too yeah like guaranteed when aspiring writers that look up to her read that that probably said okay I'm doing great yeah let's just keep going and Mm -hmm. get through this creative block absolutely oh I I I I love that I love that you found that that's cool yeah it's like comforting to know that famous people feel this way very accomplished people feel this way but then it's also kind of disappointing that it's like so this probably will always be something I cha- I'm challenged with oh yeah there's no <laughs> there's no like fixing this oh really. no I don't think so <laughs> 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 I think I think it's like you can get better at coping with it like right you can have yeah. strategies where mm-hmm. when you start realizing that and I have started to implement this where you start realizing that you're going through that thought pattern Mm. of uh, talking down on yourself is stop it step away and reevaluate what you're actually thinking yes yeah and I think you've taught me that too like taking that step back Mm. as well and Mm -hmm. I know you could probably go on more about that (laughs) (laughs) like one of the easiest things I love to tell 
clients or just people that I meet is like to always have a list of accomplishments nearby, like written down somewhere or like on your phone and your journal or something like that. Because I think sometimes when we start feeling like a fraud or like that we're not good enough and all those things, it's so nice to just look back on things you have accomplished and try to like get back in that headspace of like, look at what I've done. And that helps you get back into like, okay, let's get this. back on track. <laughs> I was going to say, I actually have like a screenshot of a bunch of reviews and nice memos. I even have a, a wall in my office of cards and memos that people have written mm. of thanks and That's every cool. single time I go into it. So I totally agree with that. As always, we always want to pass it off to you guys too. And so I created a poll mm-hmm. this morning and it was pretty much like, do you struggle with imposter syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> and 88% said yes. Wow. And so in that, I think it was like eight or something people said yes, yeah, and then one person said no. So it, that in itself was pretty huge. Yeah, it's pretty telling. <laughs> right? <laughs> and and maybe once that one person listens to this, they might realize they might actually have a touch of it yeah. and didn't know what it fully was. Well, and, Not and, that I'm wishing it on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like sometimes it's not as bad for some people yes you know like Mm -hmm. I know my husband probably struggles with imposter syndrome but I also know he's a very ultra confident Mm. person that he probably doesn't really struggle with it too much and confidence actually doesn't have I was watching a video on this it doesn't have a lot to do with imposter syndrome because you can be confident and have imposter syndrome but I think yeah exactly (laughs) but I think it's 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 deeper that like some people it just there's certain aspects that make people more inclined to feel the imposter syndrome Mm. than others Mm -hmm. um like for example being a woman in society you know we're taught to literally like we're conditioned to apologize or like we're talking on the mental health exactly like that's just Mm -hmm. unfortunately not like raised be really big and bold and out there and you know just kind of like hold yourself back and Exactly. And also like society in general, this is not um, like male or female or whatever is society also doesn't normalize talking about mental health Mm -hmm. or worries or anything. You know, if anything, it's like they're more so talking about the bandaid on it. You are getting it nowadays where there is a lot more talk about it and there is a lot more openness, Mm -hmm. um, especially with things like a pandemic going on. I think there's a lot more mental health talk. Yes. But at the same time, if we're looking at the imposter syndrome and that connection, that it is kind of like a taboo thing that you don't talk about your feelings, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And yes, you can be confident, but you can only be confident so much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. These things still pop up. And yeah, it's like, can you turn those voices off in your head fast? Exactly. Or do you let them like stew and ruminate throughout the day? And what does that look like? And yeah, exactly. like a, a moment of self-doubt that someone who's like uber confident and doesn't really like play into it may think, yeah, no, I'm not. I don't have imposter syndrome. Like I'm just yeah. tickety boo floating along. Things are good. Um, where I know that I come across very confident and I am quite confident most of the time, but I still have a lot of these thoughts. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and I know some people that are completely confident in their business and professional life. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to their personal life, they are not, they are the imposters mm-hmm. of their own personal life. Right. So like, for example, saying, oh, I can't really ask him out because I'm totally not attractive enough for him. Mm-hmm. Like, he will not find me attractive. Yeah. I'm just not going to be. And I'm looking at her like, oh my God, you're gorgeous. You're stunning. You're a catch. You're like, you're a boss. Mm-hmm. Why would you think that? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I yeah. can't. Yeah. And, and there's so many people that you can have the imposter syndrome for some things and not the other things mm. I've noticed. That's a great distinction, actually. Yeah. 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 So you don't think about that as much. It's just like not something that you have like everywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Luckily, although some may. Yeah. And that happens too, right? But it's like, yeah, being able to kind of look at the different areas of your life. Like if you're listening to this and starting to wonder like, do I have imposter syndrome? Where does it show up for me? Uh, It might be interesting to spend a bit of time reflecting and start noticing when these thoughts of self-doubt or not enough or whatever start coming up. And like, where is it in your life? Is it at your work? Is it, 
you know, in your personal life? Is it with a friend? You know, where where is it happening? And then you might find that there's just certain sections of your life that are really impacted of, and then others not at all. Yeah. What's the pattern? Mm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of interesting. I, I'm just an imposter and everything. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm very confident in my in some things rather than other things. But mm. we're not going to get into that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's you being like, don't ask. So when I was born. <laughs> yeah. Let's start. <laughs> let's let's start there. Let's start there. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I think it's interesting to just start to be aware of it. Um, because it comes back to that normalizing too, right? So if you can start to be able to talk about it and normalize it, you need to know when and where it's happening yeah. as well. So that's a really big help to do that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Before we forget, mm-hmm. I do what we also got one response, which I would love to share as always, because I love hearing from you guys because mm-hmm. you can always have the awesome. It makes us so excited. Right? Like, that's a great <laughs> Like, Mm. response. I love it. Okay. So she said, realizing that there will always be some people who know more than me, and then in brackets, or a lot more in (laughs) my field of work is helpful. It's completely normal, too. But the main thing is I know enough to still help the people that I do have, and so I focus more on what I know, Mm. which I really do like because I, I know her, and she ha- she's an industry that there's a lot of competition too and yeah it could be you can really compare yourself and say oh maybe they could do a lot more mm-hmm. but knowing where you're where you are and what your niche is and who you're talking to and yeah i really liked that one yeah i think that's cool yeah um yeah i love that and i I know who you're talking about as well. Um, (laughs) And whatever industry you're in, there's always probably always going to be competition, right? Like not many of us out here in the entrepreneur world are monopolizing what we're doing. Yeah. So knowing that there's other people that, yes, might be doing it. I mean, you might say better. You might say they know more. It could just be that they're doing things differently. Yeah. Or, you know, you might have had your eyes set on doing a certain thing and then all of a sudden, bam, your competitor just announced that they're doing it that way. And and that, like, triggers you to be like, oh, well, there's no point in me doing it now. I'm not going to be good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to stay here in my lane and just kind of, like, keep being unhappy with where I'm at or not pushing and striving for that next level. So I think it's like stopping and sorting the files. And I think you had a note about this too, right? And just like looking at like, what are the facts that you're telling yourself? What are the stories? Um, Fact versus fiction. Yeah, yeah, right? Like what's what's for real here? And yeah. the real thing might be like, this other person did this and this other person has these credentials and these are the ones that I have. Bam. And exactly. then you make up these stories that you'll never be good enough and you don't compare you're smiling at me right now I'm like what's what's on the tip of your tongue well it's funny because james will always <laughs> i'm exposing early um he'll always kind of call me out because i will put words into other people's mouth mm. or they're probably thinking this and he's like okay steph what do you actually know i'm like what do you mean he's like well what's actually been said i'm like well really nothing he's like so you're putting your ideas of what mm. you think that they're saying you don't know that this is what you think that they are thinking or and or saying. (laughs) And he puts it into the perspective. I'm like, wow, really, I am making up this whole dialogue in my head. Mm -hmm. And how it's funny every time he calls me and he does this so much and he knows it makes me so mad because I know he's right. But then, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's figuring out what is the fiction that I'm making up in my head. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all do it. (laughs) This is a practice that I do with a lot of clients, too. It's like, let's sort the files here. like, Because that's where the drama comes up. And then you get into the drama triangle, right? And it's just like stewing over all these things and and being the victim of it. Um, But imposter syndrome is a lot of victimhood, right? Like we're at the effect of not being enough or other people doing things and holds us back. Keeps us from being the best people we can be. Yeah. It's tough, but definitely happens a lot. And so true. And like, think about the energy that we put into worrying Ugh. about being like found out. 
If I could spend that energy and put it towards my passive income. <laughs> <laughs> Go to our previous Go episode. To our previous episode Listen. for that. I would be rich. <laughs> right? I'd be like, hello. hello. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's um we're not good at managing our energy when it comes to this kind of stuff. And we're just like putting it all into like, okay, like if I could just do this perfectly, if I could just do it this way, then no one's ever going to find out that I'm a fraud and I don't deserve to be here. So you're like working extra hard to do these things instead of having fun doing that. Yeah. That's so interesting. Mm. Well, it's funny that you said like the like perfectionist and stuff like that. There's this article I came across from themuse.com mm-hmm. and they actually put it in like five different types of imposter syndrome and the first one is like perfectionism mm. and so they break it down and I'd love to kind of go through some of these because I was kind of like oh I didn't really think that there could be characteristics like just like it may show up in different aspects of our life mm-hmm. there could be different ways we are associated with our imposter syndrome right or different different ways that it shows up in us right exactly yeah so Mm. one being the perfectionist so ask yourself these questions have you ever been accused of being a micromanager have you have great difficulty delegating Mm. even if you're able to do so do you feel frustrated and disappointed in the results Mm. Uh, when you miss the insanely high mark on something (laughs) do you accuse yourself of not being cut out for your job Mm. I love you that you're giggling over there. <laughs> um, and do you feel like your work must be 100% perfect 100% of the time? Mm. Um, which I And they kind of go on a little bit more about that. But I think a perfectionism is a, a huge part. And just Absolutely. like when you're in, in school, a lot of um, imposter syndrome happens in students that are trying to get A's all the time, mm-hmm. you know? And they're still getting A's, but they have that self-doubt in them yeah they're like working so 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 hard to get that perfect grade yeah that that's all they're thinking about and then other parts of their life are probably suffering because of it too or they're like lacking sleep and all these different things getting burnt out and stuff and then Mm. again we go back to self-care you're not taking care of yourself when you're burning yourself out because you're trying to be that perfectionist. Absolutely. Because your imposter syndrome saying you have to be a perfectionist <laughs> because or else you're going to... Yeah, like it yeah. if a... you're not perfect, you're going to be found out and people aren't going to trust you and all these different things are going to happen. And You're it's not like, going to get into that Ivy it's like, League So school. I'm just going to be a control freak and make sure that everything's perfect so that nobody knows that, no, oh, I'm a fraud. I don't exactly. deserve this. And. I, f- I feel like there's ways that we're very much like groomed to, to be that too, right? Oh, like yeah. we're praised as children to get these high grades and do all this stuff but like at the end of the day having a perfect gpa or or straight a's or whatever is not what makes a life yeah unless like you're trying to be like a doctor or something like that i want my doctor to be smart yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. like i I remember in high school like i was terrible at math and for the most part i if i wasn't interested in something i I sucked at it Mm. you know like i dropped out of math as soon as i could um, to take more art classes. And sure enough, I became mm. a, a, like a, an artist and I'm in the creative field and mm. I didn't need math. Go figure. <laughs> and I you took I mean? all the math classes to avoid <laughs> science. <laughs> <laughs> We're so different. We're so different. It's hilarious. Um, but Love yeah, it. so number two is mm-hmm. the Superman or Superwoman, mm. which kind of goes back to uh, the drama triangle or mm. going below the line. Yeah. Um, which I think is kind of... Uh, Interesting. So they pose a question, not sure if this applies to you, um, but do you stay later at the office than the rest of your team, even past the point you've completed the day's necessary work? (laughs) (laughs) I feel like all of these questions are me when I worked in the corporate world. (laughs) Because you felt like you needed to... Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Keep reading. I was going to say, I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> uh, do you get stressed when you're not working and find downtime completely wasteful? I still feel this sometimes. Say, <laughs> working on it. I was going to say, sometimes when you message me and you're, it's like Sunday or something like that, and you're like, oh, I got our social media posts for the week. I'm like, what? I'm in my PJs playing Animal Crossing and you're working. <laughs> like, what are you? <laughs> Yeah, you're amazing. But like, <laughs> how do you find this? I don't know. I, I take my downtime very seriously. <laughs> oh, God. I will learn. Yeah, <laughs> learn from me. Um, have you left your hobbies and passions fall by the wayside to sacrifice for work? 
uh, do you feel like you haven't truly earned your title despite numerous degrees and achievements? So you feel pressure to work harder and longer than those around you to prove your worth. <laughs> I feel seen. <laughs> I feel judged. Oh. So that's that one. So yeah. it, in general, it's the imposter mm. workaholics. Mm. They feel like they have to work really hard yeah. because if they don't, then they don't get that validation from working. Mm. I feel like I'm going to take us on a detour for a moment. Please do. <laughs> That's the whole point of the podcast. So in the training that I'm doing right now, we're learning about our saboteurs. And these Ooh. are like the inner critics or like the voices in our heads that pop up at different moments and tell us, you know, it's kind of like imposter syndrome is what our saboteurs are. Yeah. And recently on a hike... I realized that one of my saboteurs is the workaholic. Uh, And I'm like, so I just like had to share that. that, You fight her all the time. um, (laughs) Yeah, all the time. And it's, um, it, but it bounces back and forth to these two different ways. It's like, sometimes it's telling me to be working more, but then sometimes it's like on that other side too. And I'm trying to find that balance. So Hmm. I know I don't need to work all the time. But I also can't just not work. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like trying to figure out what is this, what is this world that I live? And yes, I do things on Sundays sometimes. (laughs) But like yesterday I had a board meeting in the morning and then I really didn't do like anything else that day because my energy was down. So I'm trying to recognize that too, that, okay, so I didn't really work much on a Wednesday and then I'm going to have to do it at some point. And what does that look like? And, and whatever. But yeah. the workaholic is one that I like, real I feel it. I feel it real good. So, I'd love to <laughs> chat more about that. I want to know what my saboteurs are. I think mm. I already have a sneaking suspicion. Mm. But <laughs> Yeah. And it's really cool because you like recognize them all. You like name them. You really get to know like who they are. You can like tell them to like go away. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then on the other side, you have allies. So these are the people or the they, they're not really real people. Yeah. Uh, but the, you can call on your allies to help you in different situations and, yeah. and whatnot. So it's kind of like the devil and the angel on your shoulder. Right. It's, yeah. And it's, it, it's kind of like it sounds like even like archetypes, too. We yes. Can get into that. Yeah. Like, like there's so many different ways that you could define it. But in, in a nutshell, yeah. they're all very similar things. We all have different um, ones too. But yeah, like it'd be I'd love to do like an activity with you at some point to identify yours. Mm-hmm. And then we could come and talk about it. Yes. Mm. Do that. Yeah, <laughs> entrepreneurs, we have so many. Oh yes, very much so. <laughs> but yeah, the workaholic. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like what does it say here? Imposter workaholics are actually addicted to the validation that comes from working, not to the work itself. Yep. And I could see that too. Like I used to be in the office, you know, before eight o'clock. I'd stay most days till like six, even though I didn't need to. Um, and then you know, emails. I mean, we've talked about this before too, like checking emails, doing the things like just wild. And while I'm not to that extent now, it still creeps up and I still do have to actively manage it. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't identify with that at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I love uh, that. Yeah. So number yeah. three is the natural genius. Mm. Not sure if this applies to you. Let's see. Hmm. Are you used to excelling without much effort? Do you have a track record of getting straight A's or gold stars in everything you do? When you were told frequently as a child that you were the smart one in your family, peer, or group, Hmm. do you dislike the idea of having a mentor because you can't handle things on your own or that you can handle things on your own? When you're faced with a setback... Does your confidence tumble because not performing well provokes a feeling of shame? Mm. Or do you often avoid challenges because it's so uncomfortable to try something you're not great at? Mm. Which is interesting. I feel like I identify with this. I'm not calling myself a genius or anything. <laughs> but genius, Stephanie. Genius me. But growing up, like people would always, like my family would always say, oh, you're the creative one. Mm. You're such a natural artist. Oh, you're going to be a big artist. Mm. So growing up, like I'm like, oh, I need to be this because this is how I identify in my family as this. Yes. So no wonder why as a creative now, I'm constantly like – Am I this creative person or was this just something I was told growing up? Mm. And 
I do set my standards really high in a sense because of that. So when yeah. I read this, I'm like, ah, that this can't be me. I definitely did not get straight A's or gold yeah. stars. But when it came to like the creative aspect, very much so. Like I was the creative person in our mm. family, you know. <sighs> Which <laughs> I'm like, and you're controlling. Yes, very controlling. And no. <laughs> I'm just like having so many light bulb moments about you right now <laughs> listening. <laughs> so we're going to book a coaching session for me. I have another for... podcast idea for us, which we'll, we'll do we'll do later. But oh, I, I, I just see you on the Leadership Circle profile and I see you showing up as controlling. And controlling is very like, I am my achievements. And like yeah. your achievements would be your artistic outputs. And the fact that um, – so these are the things, like, the reactive tendencies that basically live below the line. Mm. And they're the ones that really served us growing up. Um, it's when our ego, like, now goes into overdrive and that's what we do to protect ourselves. Yeah. And, oh, like, I just feel like I, I just know you so much better after these last, like, two minutes. <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> uh, you're being found oh, out. Do you feel I, seen? Yeah, it's um, kind of scary. I'm, I'm getting the imposters. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's cool that you like because reading this, like, if you just took it word for word, it's all about like the natural genius being like the smart and the good grades and stuff like that. Like but you're looking at it from the creative aspect, yeah. and like there could be so artistic. There could be musicians. There could be people really good at sports. There's other ways that this natural genius could come into play. Yeah. So something thank you that, for broadening that. Exactly. Something that people have always told you about yourself mm-hmm. that has been a standout thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Hmm. I like it. Well, <laughs> I don't like what it does to yeah. people, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Connecting the dots. Exactly. So mm. number four is the soloist. Mm. So ask yourself these questions. Do you firmly feel that you need to accomplish things on your own? Mm. I don't need anyone's help. Does that sound like you? (laughs) Do you frame requests in terms of the requirements of the project rather than the needs as a person? Mm. So this one, I'm not sure I associate with. Um, It's like for the really independent people. Yeah. Um, it's just very like, I'll just protect myself and stay in this little cocoon. And if I only do things myself, then maybe that in itself keeps you from feeling like an imposter because you're not even letting anybody in exactly. to see. Well, I kind of wonder if the soloist kind of ties in with the perfectionist mm. in a way, too. A little bit, you know, yeah. Like, I wonder if that kind of, um, yeah. Number five is the expert, mm. which I feel like, especially when you're going into business, you want to be the expert. Mm. I always tell people you need to find your positioning in the market as the go-to person. Um, so I think this one's going to be really interesting. But mm-hmm. uh, do you shy away from applying to job postings unless you meet every single educational requirement? Yep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That would I feel <laughs> seen. Um, are you constantly seeking out trainings or certifications because you think you need to improve your skills in order to succeed? <laughs> yeah, stare me down. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not staring you down. I'm just making eye contact with you because we're in a room together. Now he's being defensive. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Um, If you've been in your role for some time, can you relate to feeling like you still don't know enough? Mm. Um, Do you shudder when someone says you're an expert? (sighs) Oh, my goodness. This one I feel so seen. Mm. So seen. Well, and I struggle with this one because it's like... I truly believe that you should always be learning and growing. Yes. Right? But You're never really it's an like, expert. Where is that um, desire coming from, I yeah. guess? it's uh, Are you doing it because you're scared that people are going to find that you don't know enough? Or are you doing it because you truly want that growth? Like, where is that fine line, I guess, so that it's not like, this is my way of making up for my imposter syndrome? Yeah. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. Well, I do like the in the in this write up too in this article. They say like realize that there's no shame in asking for help when you need it because I think mm-hmm. so often there's been times where I didn't know the answer to a question and it automatically sent me down like I was below the line because I'm yeah. oh I feel seen that I'm not the expert that I mm-hmm. am. People yeah. are calling me an expert, 
I was a I was called a brand specialist yeah. at the startup zone when I was a coach there. Yeah. You know, like that was in itself I was being labeled as that. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I had to live up to this specialist, like, you know what I mean, as a I know I could do it. People were still happy. I, I got really great reviews mm-hmm. and like good feedback, but at the same time it's like you feel that extra pressure when you get that title. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. It's like now I have to live up to that and right? I'm scared and what if, yeah, what if I fail? What if I don't know? What if someone else comes in? Like, because yeah. also you didn't get to choose the people that would sit in front of you. No. Yeah. <laughs> so like what if you had someone come and sit in front of you who were like, I know more than this. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Whew. Heavy stuff. Heavy, heavy. These are really great examples, though. I love how it's like imposter syndrome when we first started talking about it is such a broad big term right so this helps just narrow it down into like where are some of the ways that it might be showing up exactly and figuring Mm -hmm. out that pattern for you yeah because when you identify it then you can you know combat it not combat it but you know help it yeah which i don't know if you have any ideas i'm sure you do of how to kind of help you know, not feel like the imposter hmm. <laughs> in these situations. Yeah, like a lot of it is like working on that self-talk. Yeah. Um, so I know like journaling is huge for me and I talk about that a lot. Mm. Um, but like bringing in your gratitude affirmations, like I mentioned earlier on this episode too, of like what are your um, achievements and reminding yourself of all the great things that you've done and like celebrating yourself that's a big one but if you could normalize it talk to others and reach out when these feelings are really starting to take over that is such a big help so if you have colleagues or someone in your network that you can do that with awesome of course you can always hire a coach of course (laughs) um and And that's another version of talking it out, right? So there's lots of different things. Like even as we were going through all of these today, and I was thinking about lots of different assessment tools and things that I have in my toolkit alone, um, just to help you understand yourself better too. Because I think recognizing the imposter syndrome is one thing, but then fully really understanding where it might be coming from could be very helpful for a lot of people in working through it. Totally. Like we said, like, look, all those people that we listed earlier, it's probably never going to go away. So whatever your approach to working through this or combating it, however you want to label that, know that it's not a perfect solution and the goal shouldn't be for it to disappear, but for you to recognize when it's happening and do something to just shift yourself back into a better mindset and a more like confident powerful state of mind so that you can keep showing up and doing all the great work that you do exactly yeah i love that yeah it's kind of identifying the triggers that may have you falling under Mm -hmm. that like i know for me i definitely i've unfought like i still follow them but i stop oh goodness what's it called when you put them out of your feed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just kind of um, like... Mute un- them. You mute yeah, them. Yeah, you mute them. Yeah, that's it. I've muted a couple people because, like, just for my mental health, mm-hmm. I I know that I'll, you know, the imposter syndrome will wreak havoc on me and that anxiety will then turn into depression if I don't mm-hmm. take care of myself. And yeah. that's why I think realizing it and, like, where it affects you in your life is huge. Um, I definitely agree you should get a coach, definitely. Um, <laughs> or just become really good friends with one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but it's yeah. The best way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's mm. huge. And yeah, definitely learning more about yourself. And I know um, I'm excited to learn more about the saboteurs and, mm. and stuff. I've been looking at archetypes, yeah. which I, want, I definitely want to do an episode on that too, yes. because that one has been eye opening to mm-hmm. me. And we're all so different. Um, and when you realize things that not only happen in your like past life, but who you are as a person now and how to vocalize to yourself when you are getting into that point of falling below the line, mm-hmm. you know, disrupting that. Maybe it is like then, you know, bringing self-care back into it and Absolutely. taking that bath, doing the ritual, doing the journaling. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. It all goes back to self-care. When we're mm. not taking care of ourselves, I'm sure the imposter syndrome comes up even more full oh, force. Oh, goodness, yes. So. Yeah. It, yeah. If you're burnt out, overworked, exhausted, all those things, um, I definitely see this being like poof, 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 yeah. poof, just triggers everywhere. So um, obviously proactively using self-care to yeah. <laughs> help hopefully, you know, make this happen less or to like less extremes. But also when you do notice it coming up, like if you have time to go for a walk, have a bath, phone a friend, even just like take some deep breaths, yeah. whatever it is in the moment to get you through it until you can do something else. We're always going to preach that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's, yeah. This took us in a lot of different ways and a lot of different places that I <laughs> expected that, but I really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would love to keep the conversation going. So I, again, I think it's the biggest thing to combat imposter syndrome is that mm-hmm. we all talked about it because yes. we all have it. And the yeah. more we don't talk about it, the more it becomes a big issue mm-hmm. so Absolutely. we de- again we'd love to pass it off to you guys if you felt this way if you have any thoughts comments or anything we would mm-hmm. love to hear as yeah. always if you need to reach out yes let us know, let us know. Mm-hmm. and uh, with that being said i guess we're ending another episode just like that just like that all right <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much bye, bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Thriving Tides. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Follow us, Thriving Tides, on Facebook, Instagram, and now YouTube to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents.